Which last night was fun. Sorry that we're old and we went to, like we went, we left early. I mean, it closed, so there wasn't really anywhere else to go. Yeah, and like for our town, Starbucks is only if you're in high school or college. It's weird if you're an adult and you hang out there. Yeah, like, honestly, it kind of is. I don't because I never see anyone I know there. Of course, half the time it's just tourists there too. But yeah, because it's right by the interstate. It's it sucks so bad that London doesn't have anywhere to hang out, and Corbin does, but like on a Friday they're all packed because, like I said, London doesn't have any, so everybody goes to Corbin. Yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those things that uh, need just like a, I mean, like a non-chain coffee shop or something like that, just uh. Well, they that have stays two open now. Past seven or eight o'clock. Yeah, that's the thing. Be open past seven or eight o'clock because there is two new. There's two coffee places in London now that aren't Starbucks. One. What? Yeah, one is down across from Sonic, and then one is across from Little Caesars and that old bank. Oh, the one that's super expensive. I don't know. I don't get coffee there. I'm not downtown a lot. My mom says it's like really expensive. Yeah, your mom would know because she's like works down there, so I'm sure she's tried it before. That sounded almost like a just me. Your mom would know. No, she wouldn't know. You're <laughs> no, good. yeah, that's. I know, um, but yeah, I Your guess mom? we'll do an intro because oh. I've been recording. Um, what's up? This is Ben <laughs> Static. Um, I'm your host Tyler, and with me I have my buddy Lucas. What's going on? And my buddy Chris. Uh, I am above this mortal plane. What plane are you on, though? Uh, Boeing seven forty seven. That's a good plane. You are above the mortal presence because they can't fly. So, well, they could fly, but I don't know. Anyways, also Lucas doesn't have his mic, so his audio might be a little wonky, but it'll be okay. Um, wonky donkey. If there's any like yeah. loud pops, I'll kind of edit them out, but it should be good. Lucas is a very quiet person. Yep. I uh, try to be. Yeah, he tries to be, and sometimes he's not, but it's okay. Because remember we did this one time, and, like, your bed, like, made an earthquake noise. When oh, you, you mean like this? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really do anything. Luckily, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You did it last time, and it's, I don't know, because you, you, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The audience doesn't care about this. Um, <laughs> but we were talking about last, like, so last night we actually were all in the same town, which is crazy, because it rarely happens nowadays, because we're all adults. Which, me and Chris are always in the same time. It's Lucas. Lucas is the problem here. I'm just kidding. No. Lucas, you're a real problem. Um, but, and we, like, went to eat, and then after we ate, there was nowhere to really go and hang out, which sucks. Which, had we gone, like, eat somewhere else, maybe, like, if we went to the Wrigley, there would have been places, like, we could have just hung out there, but it had been super loud and packed. Yeah. They usually have, like, music and stuff on the weekends, too, so. Yeah, so we couldn't have just hung out. It's hard to talk and hang out. We stayed in there until it closed, and we kind of, kind of, like, we were like, oh, it's closing, we need to leave. And then we talked yeah. in the parking lot for 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, 8 o'clock just seems early. It does, play. especially for a Friday night. Yeah, there was, like, four people that pulled up to go get food, and it was closed. I feel like it's been around long enough to where people should know when they close, I guess. Well, those yeah. people that pulled in, I don't think we're from here, because one of us from Indiana. Well, how do they find it, then? I don't know. Maybe they they do what I do when I go to a new town and Yelp stuff. They'll Yelp the yeah, best, sure. the best um, I do that restaurants. Too. Like, because I, I respect that. I don't Yelp. I don't trust Yelp, like, straight up. Well, I, Yelp's, like, I'll, I, what I do is I Google, you know, best restaurants near me. I do Google then, reviews, for sure. I trust those a little bit better than Yelp, because Yelp is a racket. Google is really not as... Is it really know, biased? Not as big, no, it's less biased than Yelp. Yelp is horribly biased. I just because I, you have to like pay to get like a negative review, and they'll like leave negative reviews up longer than good reviews. If you pay them, like you have to, it's like if you pay Yelp, they'll like yeah, keep they'll the good reviews. Yeah, and they'll keep the good reviews and delete the bad ones. It's like it's I don't so know. So you can look better than you are. I just Google best restaurants near me, and the first link 
it's either Yelp or Google reviews, and I I look at that, and that's how I use where I go to eat. That's what I well. Here's what I do: I get on Google Maps, and I just do restaurants, and then I just sort of pick from what I see. I just look around a little bit. That's that is good to know now because I do know Yelp is biased. Also, people with those businesses are like they only ask. It's like they know the people that are going to give the good reviews, and they'll ask those people to leave the reviews. Because I had somebody that I went to this restaurant, and I liked it. And they go, well, you leave a Yelp review? But I was the only person in that restaurant they asked to leave a Yelp review. It's like they know they pissed off other people. Yeah. Well, you also kind of run into the problem whenever people leave reviews. Normally, if you have a good time, I've never been like... Oh, that was a good restaurant. I need to go leave a Yelp Yeah, nobody review. wants to leave reviews when they're good. Everybody wants to leave them when right. they're bad. Yeah. Right. But if you have a terrible experience and you're mad enough to go online and leave a bad review, that's usually what happens. So I'm trying to do better about that. But do you, Are you really bad for, like, leaving bad no. reviews? I, no, I'm trying to do better about, like, leaving good reviews of places. Gotcha. I don't leave bad reviews of places. I just... I don't know. You don't frequent them anymore? Yeah, I just don't go. I just don't go back. Yeah. Unless it's something egregious, I'll review it and leave it like that. But, like... um, Do you all review Amazon things? No. I only review... I've only reviewed, like, three things that I've, like, um, got from Amazon. And is there any benefit to do it? Uh, do they? Do you get, like, Amazon rewards or anything? Honestly, probably not. So. No, I don't know either. Like that's Amazon. You got to do something to make it worth my time to review things. I don't know. It's just <laughs> reviewing is cool. Like that's fine. But the most of the time when I review something, it's not a formal five star. And then this is why I liked it. It's like when somebody's like, "Oh, I like that T-shirt. Where'd you get it? I got it off of Amazon. Um, it's really good T-shirt. Really good." Or, "Oh yeah, I went to this restaurant. It was really good. You should try it." It's always word of mouth. I hope I hope technology doesn't change it. Like I know we have the review sites, but I hope nobody's like, "Oh, you should go check out the Yelp reviews on that place. It's so good." You should just be like, "That place is really good. Go eat there." Yeah, I like I like I went into when I took my mom to Pombo, We ate a sauce. I like it's a it's a place in like a, like it's a affordable place in a small community. I'm like, I need. I, I felt like I needed to like. Support spouse. it. Yeah, I do. I, they actually, res- they actually responded to my review on Google. What did they say? Thank you. They're like, they're like, dude, this is awesome. I was like, yeah, you're awesome. Oh wow, you guys are pretty tight. Do you know the dude, owner? No, I just reviewed it. Oh, you made it like, say- I, yeah. I have been okay. So I watch graffiti tutorials and stuff, like because where I do the stickers and whatnot. And there's this guy on YouTube that I I follow. And, like, I comment on his stuff a lot, and I follow him on Instagram just because he's a small content creator, and I want to support that because it's fun stuff. Like, it's fun videos. He, he lives in Melbourne, and he'll do, like, uh, show graffiti pieces around Melbourne and, and show when he puts up stickers and stuff. He messaged me on Facebook the other day because, like, my YouTube name and my Instagram name are the same. And he goes, thank you for being such a positive impact on my channel. And I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dang, man. Yeah, I... I I guess people notice, and that's that's tough because like all these kids are trying to do like vlogs. Like we have a friend that tries to do a vlog, and I, we have friends that try to do streaming. I used to try to do streaming, and reviews are so negative sometimes on like content because the only co- only comments you look at are the ones that are the vocal minority in the negative. And if you're trying to do something creative like that, you cannot look at the comments. Like I, the only things I look at. I don't look at our reviews. I don't look at our reviews for on the iTunes or anything. I look at like when people reply to us on Twitter and email, like when they email us. So if you like really hate us and you email us, hey, you suck, I'll read that. But if you like review it on iTunes and say, hey, these guys really suck, I don't read that. I do look at how many people download, though. That's not helpful. I actually don't know how to read. <laughs> well, I can't, so, I can't read. <laughs> That's from SpongeBob. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. You're, you're right. Yeah. I was checking myself. Okay, so um, I guess that that's a cool little side tracker reviews of like how I don't know that that was neat. I liked that. That was an impromptu topic. This next topic is one that I found 
when I was trying to create the thumbnail for last week because we talked about underwear and we talked about TV and milk duds. So I was going to try to find a like a, a picture of a dude sitting in his underwear watching TV and then I was going to Photoshop milk duds in his hand, which I got pretty close with the thumbnail if you looked at it. Um, but I found, so there's this, uh, on Google Images, there's this person in front of a room of people in their underwear and it says, Cornell student delivers thesis in underwear. And I was like, well, that is interesting. Um, so I, I read the article, and so they had to defend their thesis, like for a doctorate at, at Cornell. And this student, she she did her uh, her thesis was um, this topic transcends all social identities right to the heart. So it was like people in other like women in other countries are like looked down on or whatever for like wearing different things than what the tradition states and her professor I guess I don't I guess he or she didn't know and said like told her hey your shorts are too short you shouldn't have worn those to defend your thesis and she's like bet I won't wear any shorts and then did her thesis which was about like uh, it was about like pushing people like pushing women to dress like uh what's it called flucies no it wasn't pushing oh. women to dress like flucies it was like no. it, it's like a feminist stance and it's like don't make women wear certain things i don't know something like that I can, i'm trying to find it i had it and then i lost it um vamp for me guys vamp for me while i find it i don't wanna please okay. no do chris <laughs> i don't know how to vamp um, I'm so close. How about those cowboys? Yeah. What about Ezekiel Elliott holding out? <laughs> okay. I'm Antonio Brown. I don't have any brain cells. <laughs> I wore a helmet that doesn't protect me for 14 years. That's good. Keep going, guys. <laughs> Where did you go to college? Do Where what? Where did Antonio Brown go to college? Uh, I have Cause no I was idea. Because I was like wondering like if... I think it was a small college. Okay, because I was wondering, like, how come I never, like, heard about him? But that, that would explain it. Probably. Oh, my gosh. This wasn't even this wasn't even the full thesis. It was the trial run of the thesis. But the title of the thesis, thesis is Acting in Public, Performance in Everyday Life. And it was talking about... Keep going. Keep vamping. Uh, Central Michigan. Yeah, there you go. Uh, is where Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown, Tanny was Brown. I love Antonio Brown, dude. Antonio Brown, Tanny, Tanny Brown. Let's just call him Tanny Brown. Tanny Brown. Forget you, Mister Big Chest. <laughs> Which is the craziest nickname I think I've ever heard. It doesn't. It makes no sense. Like what is what, what is that? Is... He he wanted to be called Mister Big Chest. Antonio Brown. Yeah, back in like the spring or something before he got traded. Oh. I'm just like that doesn't make any sense. Like I don't understand what the logic, what, like what that nickname is supposed to mean. Like, honestly, I have no idea. He's kind of on a like you said you were on a higher plane this morning. Yeah, was he? I feel like Antonio Brown's been on that plane for years. <laughs> he's been he be, he's been up there. He's like Terrence Howard. Yeah. My Twitter bio is still that quote about uh, I have the pieces that to make up the universe. <laughs> okay, I found I've the seen... rest of the things. Okay, so the student was told she went in for a trial run of her thesis, trial run of her thesis, like not even the real thing. And her professor and another student was like, "You should have very dressed more conservatively and um, been more professional." And she's like, "This is the trial run of the thesis." And then she goes, this is for every Asian woman who is told to speak up lest others think she's submissive. This is for every POC man who is told to pull his pants to be taken seriously. And every POC woman who was asked to straighten her hair to seem intelligent. I just, I find this very, like, because I don't dress always to the T. You know, I usually wear jeans and a t-shirt. And I'm like, this person, I'm behind this person. Not because... Not because, like, I won't always want to dress in slouch wear, but, like, when I do, you shouldn't judge me and judge what I know off of what I wear. It's like, not you shouldn't be profiled. I'm against profiling. 
Yeah, but I mean, I will say at the same time, there are certain situations and places that dressing in a like business casual or dressing up is appropriate and coming in underdressed, like I wouldn't say like it would make me question what you know, like that kind of thing. But it's just not the appropriate work wear. If there's a dress code or something like that. What was that? I'm getting chased, sorry. In what game? Doom. Oh my god. <laughs> Chris went full just like... Whew. Wow. Uh, oh, I died. I, I agree that there are times when, yes, I shouldn't just wear jeans and a t-shirt. But trial run of my thesis, I think I should be able to wear, like, jeans and a t-shirt or shorts and a t-shirt or whatever. Or, like, if, I don't know, like... Okay, think of that as, like, a job interview, though. You're not going to show up to a job interview in shorts and a t-shirt. That's not, that's nowhere near, the, that's nowhere Dude, near... Dude, it's super important. I don't think Every the trial run... Every presentation I ever gave in college, I had yep. to wear business casual at the very minimum. Yeah, but... Yep. If it was her legit thesis, yes. I think that is fine. Like, that should be business casual. But she was like, okay, it's just the practice. I'll wear this, and then I'll, like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's fine. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, I guess that would be fine. I guess it would depend on, like, the what the rules were stated. If there were none. Yeah, there if there's no, no rubric for that. Course. Like, why would you even mention it? Right, then it shouldn't matter, but, uh, yeah. I don't know, I just thought it was a bold strategy of just like, alright, you think this is too unprofessional? Takes off shirt and shorts. Like, I don't think I could ever do that. I don't think I, don't think I would ever have the guts to be like, alright. That also seems like an overreaction, but more I power mean, to her. <laughs> You could be right. Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like if somebody said that to me in my presentation, I'm like, well, I'm still going to blow my presentation out of water. You can suck it and just <laughs> keep going. I don't know. I just I thought it was crazy, for one, <clears throat> that the trial run of a thesis is that strict. And two, dude's going to just like, all right, bet, and full send it. Full send I'm still going to send it. I'm still going to yeet it. Uh, I'm going to nah, yeet this dude. presentation. That's throwing no. you the presentation. You, you still, no, you, you, yeet you, means you're just going in, man. You're just going to go do it. Like when you just like when you're playing video games, you go ya yeah, yeet. You just go in there and shoot up what you can, or you're sitting. That's in. better than saying yeet. You can't. Okay, so if you English is such a strange language. Okay, so well, this isn't even you... the yeet is not even like an actual English language. Well, it's been. But it... I don't even understand why people say it. I'm so confused by it. The first... Like if you, like if I have something and like I empty a bottle of water, I say yeet and I just chuck it as hard as I can. That's what yeeting something is in its in its basis state. Or if you're like, so the first time I like I saw full it, sand. yeah, the first time basically it says the same thing as a full sin, pretty much. The first time I'd ever heard yeet was from Tim the Tap Man, and he's like, yeah, yeet. And he'll like he'll just run in and like try to shoot as many people as he can in Fortnite or whatever, or he'll like shoot like he's like this is a long shot for a snipe, but uh, you just gotta yeet it, you just gotta do it. You gotta that's that's basically what yeet means. I just gotta do it. I want those wait. situations you said was a full send. <laughs> what? I don't what? Know. I mean, I people really replace mean. people replace one word with another word that means the same thing. Yeah, and it uh, every time I hear it, I cringe a little bit. <laughs> the one I the one that I cringe is when people say "get wrecked." I don't like that. I want to make sure I go out of my way to say that more around you now. Well, okay, so there's some middle schoolers that I come in contact with that like say "yeet" and "get wrecked" way too much. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't even know where that came from, you heathens. <laughs> Younglings, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, like it's like, I, you think you're so cool and you think I don't know what you mean, but I was in the scene of Get Wrecked and Yeet 
way before you. I was. I remember when they first used the word "yeet." I hadn't heard the word "yeet" until this year. Yeah, but you also had like been too busy and you couldn't play video games that much, like multiplayer video games. Yeah, I don't know. It. I don't get it, but I mean, I know get wrecked get wrecked has been a thing since i was in middle school yeah like it's been around for a like, long time yeah i always say eat my shorts instead of get wrecked because I, I i like bart simpson and it always like it's always like haha i don't know it's funny it's 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 more funny than get wrecked because one it's just eat my shorts like that's that's a funny phrase and then two it's because i did something really cool I feel like eat my shorts is a funnier phrase. Yeah, I said... Because then you're not throwing your pants. <laughs> I'm not eating my pants. I'm shoving them in their face. I don't get... I, I feel like I hit that age uh, that the new lingo just annoys me. <laughs> Lucas, Instead you're too of, old. Uh, I know. Which it's always been like that. I remember in high school and YOLO became a thing. YOLO I was dumb. It. I hate, like, I the, the thing I hated so about Yeet. it. No, Yeet's different <laughs> than YOLO. And all of that. <laughs> we're straight up doing a sermon series at church about YOLO. Yeah, we're pretty retro. I just, YOLO, you only, I don't know. I just didn't like when people used it, everything they did. They're like... Oh, I'm going to go jump off this mountain. No, no, because Yeet is just like, it's like Kobe. Yeet is like Kobe. It's like Kobe, it's like Yeet. Because Kobe's like when you want to hit a shot or whatever, you're just like Kobe. Kobe's cool. Yeah, so is Yeet, but YOLO is not. Because it'll be stuff, like our pastor used, uh, he goes, you know, they took a picture of a full eaten sleeve of Oreos and goes, you only, and it says hashtag YOLO. I'm like, that's dumb. No, I like that. (laughs) Because <laughs> that's, that's what you relate to, but like... Why, because I'm old? No, because we both eat a lot of Oreos, but... My, I've ate Oreos since like April. Sorry, go ahead. But I, I feel like YOLO should have been, you know, I thought about going on vacation. I'm like, you only live once. Let's go to Europe or something, like, fun. Yeah, I mean, initially that's what it was, but then memers got a hold of it and were like, no, nah, I'm going to make this stupid. And they, they were successful. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeet, yeet, I think Yeet is not Aww. the same as YOLO. I would I would do Yeet is more closer to Kobe. But it's not fully Kobe. It's almost like a mix between Kobe and Gucci. Oh, that, oh. I hate that one. You hate when people <laughs> just go, oh, this is Gucci. I don't yeah, like that I one. It. It's... It, so I try to stay hip and young because I'm around like youth kids all the time. And it's it I don't like I'm just I'm not like all there. It's more of I want to understand what they're saying about things. I don't always use the lingo. I just have to know it to make sure they're not saying anything awful. Yeah. It's it's just like <laughs> interpreting, but you don't partake in the different language. But I did, I did feel hip and young this week. Um, I told you all this at dinner is like because I got, I got some new shoes, the Hey Dude shoes, because supposedly they're cool now. I didn't get them because they were cool. I got them because my friend said they were comfortable. And then a college age person goes, "Oh, dude, are those Hey Dudes?" I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "I have the same pair." And I'm like, "Oh, he's in college. That means I'm cool. I am, I am still." <laughs> what you cool. didn't know is that guy's an outcast. Um, I mean. He's a pretty cool kid. I was just being, I don't know. I don't, I mean, he, I, maybe, I don't know. It could have been an outcast. Then I'm like, even worse, I got to burn these. <laughs> Get these off my this. feet. My feet are burning because of how uncool I am. Yeah. Chris, dabbing's not cool anymore either. That was too long of a silence. I had to break it. But like, <laughs> if we're on the, the topic of like what's cool and what's not, your dabs are not cool. Dude, my dabs are so cool, dude. You wish you could dab as good as me. Chris will dab at every point, like, any time. I don't know. I don't understand. I, it breaks tension. 
Yes, it does. Tell me it doesn't. That's as awkward as when people go, oh, it's it's so awkward. I'm going to do the awkward turtle. The awkward no, turtle. The awkward turtle's stupid. Awkward turtle's dumb. Yeah, that's, that's the dumb. same thing that. as a dab. It is no such thing. It's, it's, it is, it is just nah, the same straight, thing. Nah, straight, nah. Nah, dog. If, especially if you're using it for the same purpose to break tension. Mm. It'd be another thing if you yeeted something and it went really good, then you dabbed. Like, if you go, oh, I'm going to shoot this basketball yeet, or like Kobe, and then it goes Don't in. Don't say, if you shoot a basketball and say yeet, you lose, like, citizenship privileges. Fine, then. You shoot a basketball, like, a, th- a really long three, and you're like Kobe, and it goes in, then you dab. Like, that's appropriate. I feel like that's appropriate. But the awkward times is dabs are not appropriate. That was, I deserve that. <laughs> yes, you did. No, I was talking about, the, I couldn't shoot this guy with a shotgun for my life. Sorry. Um... But, like, do you understand what I'm saying? Stop! Oh, my God, I hate that. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh, God. I, we, I, there are some things that I understand, yes, are very annoying, Lucas. Point in fact, the dabbing. Because he does it in public. He does it when we're at Fiesta eating lunch. <laughs> like, it's just, it's it's in public, and I'm just, I, why would you do it? And Chris has got to be Chris. If he wants to dab, he dabs. Free country, baby. <laughs> I understand free speech. I don't like what you say, but I, I, I believe in the right that you have to say it, I guess. Heck yeah, bro. Oh, there it went. It's up there. It's up there. Oh, here it comes. Ooh. And the fat dab right there. I'm cutting this. Nah, dude, it's funny, don't. No, it's too long of silence. It, no. I'm saying words. There's a penny stuck to my foot. Get off. Okay, we're good. Okay, can I talk about how your hash the hash brown casserole dude, oh, went dude. through my okay. inside? No, yeah, okay. It went we can talk my about inside that. just afternoon like a cheese grater. <laughs> so, um, Chris, Chris came. Oh, say, okay, I guess I gotta put like uh, I gotta like set the mood. Samantha and her friends do this. It's at this thing called dinner club, and uh, it's where once a month or pretty close to once a month they eat. Uh, like they'll eat dinner at one of the houses of the friends and this this month was samantha had it at her house and i helped cook and we made i made pancakes which my pancakes were baller right chris yeah um they were pretty thin i I wish i could have got them fluffier but the mix was too runny for me but it's okay it's all right i made i dealt with it and i made some good pancakes from it um and i i made I helped make, I didn't make it solely, the hash brown casserole. And this hash brown casserole, it's like, it is the equivalent, she she got the recipe from Cracker Barrel. So I think Cracker Barrel's hash brown casserole. Um, and it's it's got a lot of cheese. It will, I think the ingredients are, you know, the, the frozen hash browns, uh, shredded cheese, chicken broth, and sour cream, and I think some onions. But anyways... Wait, there was sour cream in those? Yeah. Oh. Why, why, why do you say that? I would probably explain why my insides Thursday decided to... Are you... Just to just... Like, are you allergic to sour cream? No, I just hate sour cream. And my body is, rejects it. That's not... I'd say you don't like the taste, but I doubt your body rejects it. Mm-hmm. Hold on. Okay, we good. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> Okay, so I'll probably cut the silence of that, but, like, Chris just had a sneezing fit, and, like, he muted his mic, and it looked like he was, like, in pain. Did you notice that, Lucas? Yeah. Oh, it's happening again. Oh, oh yeah. gosh. Oh. He looked oh, like he man. was hurting. I hate, dude, sneezing makes me so mad. I hate it. Does sour cream make you mad? Yeah. I don't think your insides reject it. I think you just don't like the taste, but you ate it. It tastes like... Dookie. It doesn't taste like dookie. It tastes like sour cream. Yeah, sour dookie cream. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like whipped cream? You got you there. Heck yeah, dude. Cool whip. <laughs> That's, it's basically old cool whip. Well, yes, I would love to eat old milk. Perfect. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what it is, right? I guess. I don't know. So old milk you eat because you can't drink, uh, because you drink new milk. Food for thought, baby. I mean, I'm going to, I like milk and I like dairy products. I just, I want to meet the guy that's like, dude, I'm going to supple on this cow's nip. 
and I bet it tastes oh, good. Oh, goodness. I mean, that's what he probably did. He's like, he probably was like on an... Oh, he was absolutely a deviant. Yeah, he was like, dude, this farmer's cows got such big udders. I see you looking, I see you, Bessie, over there, mocking me. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, I'll show you, Bessie. And it's a good day to die young, baby. <laughs> and he just goes in like, like, YOLO, I'm going <laughs> to suck on this cow's udder. <laughs> Um, back in, back in like, two thirty AD or whatever. I don't know. And then he's like, "That that tastes pretty good. I'll put it in a bucket and I'll try to sell it." But then the fact that it got old, and he's like, "I think I could still eat this," and it got like coagulated and kind of solid. Who came, up, who came up with cheese? I'm assuming the same guy. I think the same guy came up with it. I think the same deviant. Was like, oh, I got, he, he ran out, of, like, he didn't have people to sell milk to for a little bit, but he saved the milk from the cow. And someone's like, hey, you got any milk? And he looked, and it was kind of, like, curdled. And he was like, oh, yeah, I got some milk. And he handed the bucket of that to, to the guy that was wanting milk. And the guy tried, he goes, this is different, but it's still good. I feel like that's how cheese got made. Yeah, but the Limburger dude is like, man, you need to go to jail for that. He's like, man, this has got mold. It's even better than what it was before. Limburger and blue cheese are a little like sketch. Like I, don't... I have imbued, I have imbued myself with the power of the moldy cheese. It's like Gryffindor's sword. It only takes in what is weaker than it. I've... Now that I eat the moldy cheese, I am now strong. I've never eat Limburger How? cheese, but I I frequent blue cheese. Like not. Not like in big clumps. Like I'll get the Zaxby's salad, the blackened blue salad. Okay, actually, I've never had a salad from Zaxby's. Zaxby's salads are pretty on point. They're really good. Are they? Yeah. I'll go to training in Frankfurt and I'll eat Zaxby's more than any other restaurant. Um, but anyways, they have a, this. They have this salad called the black and blue salad, and that has crumbles of blue cheese, and I eat those. But I don't think if you just hand me a block of blue cheese, I'm gonna be like, "This is baller. I'm gonna eat some." And then blue cheese dressing's good, too. Like, I eat that with my wings. Yeehaw, dog. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, Zaxby's salads are good. Sorry, I am, like, in the freaking zone right now, dog. I am wrecking shop. Are you online? Out of my way. Are you online, Mortal. or are you playing, like... Little fools. Are you playing online or offline? I'm online, bro. Why don't you play an online multiplayer game while recording, Chris? Because, is my content good? I mean... It's not. Yeah, it's, it's pretty. Yeah. It's not awful, but it's not as good as it could be. Nah, we're good. I'm. I'm bringing the straight comedy right now, dog. I'm glad you think so. Ooh. Dang, I think it's. I think it's going pretty well. I mean, I'm having fun. I just don't think the audience would have fun with this. Wow. Way to crush my hopes and dreams. It's okay. This won't be in there. <gasps> what? I've been I've been led astray, bamboozled. I've <laughs> been bamboozled. I, it's I you don't even listen to the podcast, so it doesn't matter what you what's in the what is find the final edit. Assume all my good stuff's in there. I mean, yeah, the good stuff <laughs> is. So, so all of this stuff. I just found an article where uh, the principal got called in to a school. Where a raccoon had crawled its way into a vending machine. That's awesome. <laughs> I feel like that's something that would happen at our school. I uh, know, right? Where it's like, uh, I didn't read where it happened or anything, but uh, he went in and saw it and had to call animal control. But how in the world does a raccoon like get into the school and then find its way into the vending machine. I feel like heating the heating ducts or the air ducts or how it got in or somebody left yeah. the door open. Yeah. I think that, I think it getting inside the school is the easy part. I think it came from the dumpsters, like in the dumpster eating some good, good, like old, um, lunch food. And I was like, Oh, yeah. oh Hey, there's an open grate over there or there's an it open door. Dumpster. What'd you say, Chris? It came from the dumpster like a monster. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, I, I think I can make it into the school going this way. I think I would like to live in the school, and it goes in the school. I don't think the raccoon recognizes that it's a school. Well, building, whatever. Okay, school, the raccoons are not really... The, you don't know how don't sentient know that. a raccoon is? Oh, they are sentient because they're Well, I mean, alive, like, uh, 
how aware a raccoon is. Intelligent. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. That would have been the word to use. Whatever. Whatever. Same difference. But anyway, I think it was like, oh, people go in here. I think I would like to live in here as well. There you go. Yeah. It's like it, they made that correlation and it's in there and it's in there for like a couple days. And it's like, I'm getting hungry. I can't make my way back to the dumpster because I don't know if I'll be able to get into this nice, comfortable building again. So it starts snooping around for food, and it saw a human put push buttons on this machine or box. It would probably call it a box because he well he doesn't know what a box is. This thing, which is the vending machine, he's like this thing. This human push buttons. This stand up dumpster. This stand up dumpster. There we go. <laughs> um, and he saw the human get something out and start eating it. He's like, oh, that's food. And he goes up to the, the stand-up dumpster, and he starts pressing buttons, and nothing happens. He said, well, I saw this human stick its its arm in this hole, so I'll jump in that hole because I'm smaller. And then, it, and, then it's in the, and then it's in the vending machine. My point, though, is the, the principal should have just, like, manned up and got the, like, like, got the raccoon out. Who wants a roadkill? <laughs> well, take it. he just takes it out and runs it over. <laughs> he, he, he pulls it out, throws it on the ground, and runs it over. That seems yep. like animal cruelty. <laughs> Be in my vending machine. Get bro. out of my vending machine. This is my stand-up dumpster. <laughs> you, you have trans, you have transgressed against my school. I will transgress against your life. <laughs> but I mean, I guess, I guess, animal control. If you're not wanting to kill the animal, it all. Okay, so if I'm that principal. Are kids at the school, or is it, like, only teachers? Is it before school starts? That's very pivotal right. for me. Screw the teachers if they get rabies. Well, no, no. My fact is the, the teachers aren't going to care if I kill it. The teachers will not care if I kill a raccoon. The kids would care if I kill the raccoon. Yeah, but those are the teachers are like, okay, I probably don't want them on my staff anymore because they're questioning me and they make me look bad. I mean... I don't think I would want to kill a raccoon for getting in and getting in a vending machine. Lucas, here's the thing. Here's the thing about a raccoon. If it can get in a place, if it can get in a place and you take it somewhere, it's going to get back in that place. It already knows. It's too smart. No, it's going to know. It's going to find its way. It's like Homeward Bound, but off brand because nobody wants a raccoon. Um, So it doesn't matter if you take it far away and they come back. You're just going to, you're going to make sure it never comes back. There's a problem, and you have to permanently solve it. You can't just do this half, but no half measures. Yeah, no half measures. You got to fully solve the problem. You got to fully send it. Yeah, you got to fully yeah. send it. Um, cause, cause what's what if the raccoon goes away? You send him far away, back to the woods. But then he brings his whole family. Yeah, he's like, I found this place where there's immense amounts of food, and a stand-up dumpster, and the people are like, what a stand-up dumpster? And it's climate control. And like, it's always cold. Like not, but not too cold where we freeze, and it's not hot. This is how the raccoon explains it to his family, and they're just like Oregon Trail it back to the school. And then they all died dysentery. Only a couple died dysentery. Raccoons aren't as subs- oh. uh, aren't as su- like um, ac- applicable applicable to get uh, dysentery. Liable. Liable. There we go. Likely. Likely. There. That's the better word. Likely. Raccoons aren't as likely to get dysentery. <laughs> So they're gonna. No, they're, so the percentage of raccoons that make it through this Oregon Trail, we'll call it the Stand Up Dumpster Trail, is higher than what the Oregon Trail was. And they'll they'll be a. You'll your school is just gonna be overrun, Lucas. Is what I'm getting at. You're gonna have so many raccoons, and they're gonna run the joint. Because yes, I can take one raccoon, and I can teach it a lesson, but I can't. I can't take like a colony of raccoons. Like how many raccoons could you guys fight? Seventy. You you. Well, hold on. You don't have a gun. I got two right here. <laughs> <laughs> your what's your weapon? Boom, boom. You can't have a gun. What's your weapon of choice? Bazooka. You can't have anything that files projectiles. That's a, so I can't even make snot rockets. Okay. Um, <laughs> man. Uh, chainsaw. Chainsaw. Okay, that's a good one. I think I think maybe seventy. It depends if they come like one one on one or if it's a wave of them. I would take baseball bat. I think I would take baseball bat. Lucas, what about you? Uh, 
I'd call animal control. No, 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 no. You're you're having to fight the raccoons. It's overran. Oh, no, you said you said you're no the, projectiles. You're in the woods. You're no, no, you're at the school. I used a cell phone. Oh. You're at the school and you've called animal control and they said how many and you said there's droves of them, droves and droves. They're like, nah, bro, you're on your own. Okay. You you have to pick a weapon that's that's at the school. Chris chose chainsaw. So you can't choose chainsaw anymore. Chainsaw would be at the school because it'd be at the janitor's closet, I feel like. Baseball okay. bat, that's in the locker room. Duh, baseball team. Okay, Lucas, what's your weapon? Two chainsaws. <laughs> Gasoline and a match. Okay, okay, that's... <laughs> Take a bite of the school. <laughs> yeah. Lucas, it's like, what, it's those memes of when you find a spider, like you saw a spider and then you don't see it anymore. All right, burn the house down. Yeah. People are too and mean you just spiders. see me. It's like that picture of the little girl at the burning house where she's turning. And... <laughs> That's Lucas as the talking about a weird, a weird picture. There's so much unexplained stuff about that picture, dude. It's like she wished it upon that house and it happened. She's like, yes, I'm powerful. I'm a wizard. I'm the master of this domain. I think Lucas wins. Well, okay, Lucas kills the most raccoons, but he does the most damage. I feel like Chris is going to kill a lot of raccoons. Um, Blaze of glory, baby. But I think there's going to be still some property damage because he'll miss a raccoon or two with the chainsaw and go into the wall or something. And I feel like I would probably get overtaken by raccoons. I feel like if I took the baseball bat, I would get overtaken. Yeah, you, you, you've you sacrificed your speed for, 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 not, for, for a little bit less damage, dude. Yeah, I think here's my thing is I think at some, some of them that attacked – I would kill them on contact, but I, others I would I would knock unconscious and then they would bide their time, and then they would attack when I'm like cleaning up that's the. That's why corpses. you stomp their head when they're unconscious. Oh, that's true. I got to do the double tap. Do the weasel stomping day routine. Weasel stomping. <laughs> okay. That's a really deep cut from Weird Al, so I don't know. <laughs> Can you? Do you how many? What song is that from of Weird Al? Weasel stomping day is the name of the song. What's it based? Like, what's the song for? Like, what? He has original songs. Oh, that's an original song? Okay. Yeah, he's Nature Trail to Hell's original. Uh, what is that? There's, a couple, there's a couple of those. Those are like, those are like, not like early, like mid 90s songs. Though. Those are before the research, for the Weird Al Renaissance, if you will. I did. I was unaware of a Weird Al Renaissance. <laughs> it was after yeah. Why Nerdy like, and then um, when and he had the more recent songs. Yeah. Though? In the 2000s? Mid-2000s or early 2000s? Mid. Mid, okay. Mid, yeah. That was probably quite nerdy. Fifth or sixth grade. So, he did the NSYNC, he did NSYNC parodies, correct? That's like where he... He did parodies of everything. I know, but like, when did he start? What's his prime? His first song he ever did was for uh, My Sharona, and it was called My Bologna. Oh my god. So that was like 1979. You, uh, you know a lot about Weird Al. Look, <laughs> I know what I know. I know Ray Stevens. That's that's my uh, that's my funny song person. Oh, what about Cletus T. Oh, Judd? No. <laughs> Cletus T. Judd, I've never I've never listened to, but I'm aware of who he is. I, the only song I remember he did is he co-opted "I Love This Bar" into "I Love NASCAR," but really that's not a country parody song. That's just another country song at that point. Yeah, it's just you yeah. stole the tune and made it your own. You made your own song from the same tune. It's like when they... Have you all ever watched the video of the three chord song? The... What? It's 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 these three guys. Um, and it's called the three chord song. You can play so many songs with the same three chords. They do like parody music. And they're like, you know, we're getting pretty big. We are we got a lot of songs. And they go, but we do, do we have a three chord song? And the audience is like, what? And they're like, you know, a three chord song. And then they played so many songs with the same three chords. <laughs> I've never seen it. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourself this episode. I know I enjoy always talking to you guys. Um, I enjoyed that raccoon thing a little bit too much. I think I, I think I need to take out. Can I get a riding lawnmower and do it? I think you could do well. Steer with one hand and like get a baseball bat and bat him down into the way. No, the tra- you have to choose one. Into... You can't have two. You got to choose one. I have two hands. Well, you have to keep both hands on the wheel. It's a lawnmower. You don't need two wheels on. You don't need two hands on a wheel on a lawnmower. Um. Well, is it a zero turn? Cause you have to have both hands to hold down the hand. No, no, no. 
No, it's just a straight up like put it in first gear and just take it slow. Okay. And I can just bat. I can like if they jump up, I can bat them down in front of the lawnmower. I would take a floor buffer. Oh. Yeah. Jeez. Our school would be washed in the blood of the raccoons. Just drenched in it. That's metal. <laughs> it's pretty metal. I just thought of that. Um, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed that conversation as well. Um, you should tweet at us and tell us how you would kill uh, droves of raccoons. Um, actually, don't, don't... Let's just make sure we know this is in self-defense, everyone. Yeah, if you tweet it, make sure it's in self-defense. But if you email us, you can just tell us. like, Because I'll know what you're talking about if you email us. Um, also, the rules are no projectiles. Um... So, like, no guns or bows and arrows or bazookas. Oh, I just got snapped. But Sorry. you can use any blunt force or take Lucas's approach and burn them. If you're close to the science lab, you could get some acid. I'm just saying. But that's a lot of collateral. You might end up killing yourself with that one. I don't think you'd kill yourself because you just put it in, like, you just throw, like, put it in some beakers and throw it and let it splash and kill them. Well, no, that's technically a projectile. Can't do that. You could pour it on that's them. Risky. That is risky. Um, but yeah, if you email us, you don't have to tell us, you know, context because I'll know. But if you tweet at us, um, definitely put some context on that. So if you're going to tweet at us, it's at BT Static. If you're going to email us, btstatic.pod at gmail.com. Um, you can also comment or review, and I'll, I'll I'll try to look at those. Like I said, I don't usually look at reviews. But it'd be cool if you did review us to help us out. Um, so that's very, it's, it's anonymous, and I won't judge you for any of your reviews. But anyways, um, I think we're going to end this episode. Thank you for watching, or lis- well, listening. You're, we're a podcast, you listen to us. Because um, you can't see Chris's dabs. So, <clears throat> <clears throat> Unless he does that, you'll know he dabbed. That's Chris, every time you dab now, you have to do that noise. <laughs> <laughs> or a noise. But, um... Hopefully, this episode's been better than static. We will catch you guys next time. Bye. Have you ever been reading through a stack of comics and thought, hey, maybe I should see what the Arkham Asylum game is all about, or been playing Marvel vs. Capcom, and felt like you were at a real disadvantage because you didn't know who half the characters were? Well, Play Comics is the show for you. I'm Chris, and each episode, I take a look at video games based on comic book properties and how well they stick to that source material. So, whether you know the comics and want to actually learn how these games work, or know the games and want to know what the hell is going on, Go check out Play Comics at playcomics.com, the Brain Trust Bros Network, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts.